Father, only you can do what no man can do. What you are going to do here today, only you can do it. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for being with us in Kano State since yesterday. Thank you for another message that will bless your children, that will keep them strengthened till you come. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Let your name be highly exalted in our midst now in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Please take your seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I'm happy to be in Kano State for the second time. I think I came here 2013 since then. This is my second time. And I'm so grateful to be among my brethren, children of God, in Kano State. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Today, my topic to you is, is Jesus still with you in your Christian race to heaven? Is Jesus still with you in your Christian race to heaven? All what we are doing in this world, we are running a race. And the race is to eternity. And this eternity, there is two places, heaven and hell. Some people are running the race to go to hell, while some are running the race to go to heaven. But we Christians, we have, no, we have come to know that we are running the race to heaven. Because Christianity is the way to heaven. Hallelujah. So today, the Bible says, many are called, few are choosing. Many are called, few are choosing. Both Christians, whosoever, any religion, any belief, any faith, any man or woman, we are all called by God, created by God, but he has called us, but many are not going to listen to his call. Only few are going to obey his voice, and only few will make it to heaven. Today we can see Christianity is everywhere. For example, you can see churches everywhere. Churches everywhere. Go to some states, some countries, Sunday, from one place to another, you see church, only little distance between them. Everybody is worshiping God. Everybody is singing to God. People are paying their tithe. They are worshiping God. Pastors are being ordained. Many people are saying, the Lord says, open church. The Lord said, the Lord say. There are many people that are serving God, speaking in tongues, baptized, doing miracles, seeing signs and wonders. Many people are giving their life to Jesus every day. And many believe that they are going to heaven. But I want to ask you, as I asked earlier, is Jesus still with you in your Christian race to heaven? There are many people that are running the race thinking the Lord is approving their ministry. Thinking the Lord is approving what they are doing. Thinking the Lord is still with them in this Christian race. But they, have, but they didn't know that the Lord has left them a long time. It's when some of them, is when they die, it is a pity. That when they die, they go over there, the Lord will tell them that, I don't know you, you workers of iniquity, depart from me. Some are shocked because where they have landed now in hell, it's a painful thing to them. They can't come back to do restitution. They can't come back to go to the right doctrine. They can't come back to join the right denomination. They can't come back to make amendments with God. But they have been deceived. And many people on earth are like this. Thinking the Lord is with them. Many churches today, they will be telling the Lord is here with us. The Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is showing us vision. The Lord is doing this. The Lord is doing that. But I want to tell you, there are many denominations. There are many Christians home. There are many youths that are Christian youths, women. The Lord is not in their journey. The Lord is not with them. Because of many people have caught their cross. They have caught their cross for worldly pleasure. The cross they are carrying, they have caught it. The cross that Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you must forsake the world, forsake mommy, forsake daddy, forsake family, forsake your plans, your ideas, your desire, and pick up the cross and follow me. But many people today have caught their cross. They are not carrying the full cross. And why? It's because of the things we are seeing in the world. Turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 45. Is Jesus still with you in your journey? 
you are running the race, you are speaking in tongues, you are doing publicity, you are doing evangelism, even in a state like this, that you have people that don't believe in Jesus, and then the Christians are looking like bush meat to them. You are doing all, you are going out, you are risking your life, you are praising God, you are preaching Jesus, you are, be, you are bold to tell people about Jesus, but all these services that you are doing, are you sure Jesus is still with you? Are you sure Jesus recognizes you? Are you sure Jesus is pleased with your work? All the churches you are opening, the branches you are opening, the, the signs and wonders, are you sure? Turn with me to, as I said, to Luke chapter 2, we start from verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they have fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. They are in the company, going with Jesus to the feast. You just like you are walking with your child. And then after everything, say, let's go back. You are busy talking with your husband, believing that your child is with you. But when you get to, you know that your child has been missing. This is how many Christians today, they go to church, we are going to serve Jesus. They say we are Christians. They are singing, they are dancing, they are recognizing, they say, oh, we are Christians, we are, we are going to heaven. But God is not with them. But they, supposing him to have been in the company with a day's journey, and they sought him among their kin flocks and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Today you will go back to Jerusalem and seek Jesus. Today you will go back to the feet of Christ and say, God, sorry, I've never known I've left you a long time. Because of this behavior in me, this attitude, this doctrine, I am preaching, I'm practicing. I never know the doctrine I'm, I'm practicing. I never know the way I'm dressing. I never know the way I'm running my Christian life. You have left me long ago. I was busy running this Christian race. I was busy boasting. I was even telling other people that you are lost. We, the Christian, we are the ones that are going to heaven. I never know I was among those that don't believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. So you can see here, Joseph and Mary, the earthly mother of Jesus, they were going, thinking Jesus was with them. They never knew. And how many days this day happened? And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. After three days, they, come, they were looking for Jesus. For three days, they have not seen Jesus. But they believed that Jesus was in their company. How many of you today, you are opening churches, you thought that Jesus is with you, the voice you heard, the Lord said, she'll go and open the ministry. Did you seek to know that if it was God that said she opened the ministry? Many Christians today, they are running their lives the way they want it and not in the way of God. Matthew chapter 16, this is what the Lord said. If you want to come to heaven, if you want to be a disciple of me, let's turn there and see. And then you will know that many people have caught their cross today. They are busy running the race. They are busy preaching. They are busy speaking in tongues. They are busy professing that they are Christian. They are busy covering their head. Some are not covering their head. And they say they are going to heaven. But there are many things in their lives that God has abandoned their Christianity. Their names is not in the book of life. Some have, the pitiful thing is that some are closer to death. They didn't know up to this time. Up to this time, they don't know that their names is not in the book of life. They are following church doctrine. Church tradition. They will be telling you, we are the one that built this church. We are the one. Do you know how many souls we have brought to the Lord? Even we have converted Muslims to come to Jesus. They are proud of that. They are boastful of that. But they didn't know that that's all what they are doing is service. And what takes to heaven is holiness. There is difference between anointing and holiness. All this zeal of evangelism. Ah, this sister is bold. Ah, this pastor is bold. This pastor can preach. This pastor can talk to Muslims. This pastor has opened many abalist people's eyes. This pastor has so many prostitutes to cry. Yes, the pastor has the power, the ability to win them. But he don't have the holy life. And his name is not in the book of life. There are many churches today. You see there are thousands of congregations. And some of you have been deceived. Ah, 
this pastor for God to give him a source like this. We have branches all over Nigeria, all over the world. We see our pastor faces everywhere. Even the government recognizes our pastor. Huh? Our pastor see vision, everything. He say, come to pass. You have been deceived by the earthly pleasure, by the promotion of the earthly pleasure. But you will be surprised to know that God is not in that church. All what they are doing there is not pleasing God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You must deny yourself. You must deny yourself in many things in this world. But we have seen today many Christians don't want to deny themselves. You will tell that the Lord said we should not put this thing on our body. A pastor will tell you that it doesn't matter. A woman will stand up and say, how can I look without makeup? And you tell me, God say, I, I, I will not go to heaven. They cannot forsake the adornment. They cannot forsake the jewelry because of that. You will tell a pastor, sir, this preaching you are preaching, it is not correct. Preach like this. He will tell you that. Do you want my congregation to go? And God is not like that. We are under grace. You know, let the Lord convict them. But me, I cannot tell a fear of making people to go to leave the church. Because if they go, they will not have tithe and offering again. These are people that have caught the cross. These are people that Jesus is not with them in their journey. All what we are seeing today in Nigeria, we are praying, we are praying, we are praying. Some of you, you are praying, and you are not seeing change. You are asking yourself, God is not answering me again. See the oppression I'm passing through in my office. See how they are bullying me. See how they are oppressing me because I am not a Muslim, because I am not part of their society, because I am not part of this tradition, because I am not part of this tribe, because I am not born and brought up from this place, so they don't give me promotion in the office. But I have been praying, the thing is getting worse. I have been praying, the thing is getting worse. Have you sit down to check, is Jesus in your Christian race? Are you sure Jesus is happy with your Christian life? Are you sure you are pleasing Jesus? Because one thing we know, God is not a liar. He said, I will not forsake the righteous. When the righteous pray, the Lord answer. So if you have been praying for 10 years, 15 years, nothing is happening in your life, have you seek the face of God to say, God, are you still with me in this my race? In this my Christian life? In this my Christianity, I'm saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Am I sure? Am I pleasing you? Or something, a little fox. Little foxes have grown in your vineyard. Or your way of appearing and God is not happy with you at all. We have to be careful. Because me talking to you here today, I was very serious in the house of God. I was thinking that it's by works that would take me to heaven. And I really display works in my former church. My former denomination. When you talk about coming to church, I was there giving tithe and offering. I was there worshipping the pastor because that is what I would say. Giving the pastor the highest honor. See him as, as the almighty. We are ready to do all for our pastor. We are doing publicity. We are bragging for, for our church. We boast about Jesus. We boast about our pastor. We do all. I thought that I was going to heaven. Until that day, that faithful day, 2013. The Lord make me to know that I was not with you in your journey. All the Christianity you were claiming, all the, the, the singing and dancing you were doing in the church, all the Christian race you were running for how many years, I was not pleased with you. And your name was not in my, bio, in my, your name was not in my book, my holy book. Only those that are holy. So I want to open your eyes today so that you will not run this race in vain. You will not say you are a disciple where you are not. You see what the Bible says here. You must deny yourself. Deny yourself. Because man loves the things of the world. And the Bible has told us that anyone that loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All these things the Lord is rebuking, him for, rebuking us for is because we love the pleasure of the world. Especially women. The fashion of the world. The decoration of the world. Women love it. It's hard for women to subdue themselves, to submit themselves, to deny the worldly pleasure. The men, they are running after money. The youths, you can't find them now in holy churches. The youths, they, they have turned the church into a nightclub because they can't forsake the nightclub. If you say you want to be a Christian, you don't go to a nightclub. Ah, it cannot work. So now the church has turned into a nightclub. So keep them in the church. They must dance. They must do drama in the church. The youth have the department. They will do whatever they want to do. And the pastors are encouraging them. 
Jesus is not with you in your journey. Jesus is not with many people, many Christians. The thing that will pain many Christians is when you will see yourself counting among those that don't believe in Jesus and you, are, you will be doomed in hell with them. All the bragging, all the boasting. So please, check your life. Because Jesus said, if you want to be my follower, somebody that will say, Jesus is my Lord, is my Savior. He said, where I'm going, where I'm going, you know, and you will come there. So only those that follow Jesus, only those that believe in Jesus, that will go to heaven. But if you are not among his company, if you are not a follower, then how will you go to this heaven? No way, you can't go. You can't go. Sing all the singing you know in the church. Do all the evangelism. Spare all the money in the church. It's very good. It's a good service to the Lord. But what the Lord is looking for is your heart. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You cannot be serving God in disobedience to his word. The Lord said, I don't want anger in you. You have anger. Pastor, you know God said, liars will go to hell. You are lying on the pulpit. Somebody was giving us testimony. And Kaduna was telling us that they were in the Lord choosing. And they told them that if you don't say the testimony is like this, then the, the pulpit will not be shaking. Something happened two years. They say, go and say five years. So people will think that the God of choosing is doing miracle. A practical lie. And this is how pastors are forging testimony today. Just to advertise their churches. And you say, Jesus is there. God is not with you in your journey. You are walking in vain. You are just busy going. The Lord has left you since. Some pastors, some evangelists, God truly called them. But how many years ago, they compromised the standard for money. They backbite. They lie. They have gossip. They use church money the way they want. See church as their personal business. They run the church the way they want. And God is not happy with them. Some of you, you have been a victim. Pastors have slept with you, and you are still in the church. And they say, and God understand, God is not there. The widows have turned to a pastor concubine. The choirs have turned to a pastor concubine. And you are busy singing in the church. I want to tell you, the Lord is not with you. And you that are inside that church, you are inside darkness. The Lord is not looking on you. So you have to be careful. Because why I'm telling you like this, I was not careful. I was not careful. I was only carried by what I see, by the miracle of my former pastor, by the, the testimony of people about the church, about the signs and wonders what people are saying about my pastor. So I believe I was in the right church until that faithful day. You must be sober. You must be sober because the hour we are now is the hour that anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. You have to cover yourself. Hallelujah. Jesus laid this, this rule. This is the rule that was laid by the Lord Jesus. It said, if you want to follow me, you must carry your own cross. He will not carry it for you. You must carry this cross. But this cross today, many Christians have caught a cross. Many Christians are running from the cross. Many Christians are dodging the cross by false doctrine. Some have compromised the cross. Make the cross to be so light. That they don't want to feel the pain of the cross. A cross is, is a painful thing in the sense of God sacrificing himself for us. Going through all this pain. When you are carrying a cross on you, it's a painful thing. You must carry the cross. You must show the world that I am suffering for Christ. I am following Jesus. I am not part of this world. But many people today know the way they are following Jesus is the way that suits them. The way they want. Even if they go to churches, they will listen and observe this church is not decent. This church is not nice. The pastor is not looking. He's not dressing sexy. How ah, can I say this is my pastor? See the sandal on the pastor face. The church is not growing. The church is not beautiful. They will live and go. Some people, they don't want to suffer. They will go to a church when the pastor is preaching a true word of God, a hard word. They will run away. They have cut in their cross. They don't want hard doctrine. They want soft doctrine. And this is why many churches today, the soft doctrine have overshadowed the true doctrine, the hard doctrine. And many Christians don't know what is suffering. Many Christians don't know what is suffering. They don't want to suffer for God. You must carry this cross. It's a must. If you love me, carry the cross. That is the word of the Lord. When you carry the cross, it shows that you love the Lord. Don't run away from the cross. 
Don't run away from this cross. Put your head under. You have given your life to Jesus. Carry the cross. When you carry the cross, it shows that you are gratitude to him for dying for you. When those that are suffering for Christ in heaven, Jesus is happy. That see my children, see how they are suffering. Job carried his cross. And God was very happy, was boasting before Satan. And said, have you tried my servant Job? Who is righteous like him? With all the things that Satan did to Job's life, Job still carried the cross, that this cross. I will carry my cross till I meet you in heaven. But many Christians don't carry their cross. Many pastors don't carry the cross. Little holy preaching, when people start going, they will drop the holiness preaching and go back to carnality and say, me, God call me for prosperity. It's only prosperity. And many people are looking for prosperity. Yesterday, people were here, many. So they will say, ah, no, these are holy, holy people. I don't have time to go to holy, holy. But if that Dedica was those kind of person that receive blessing and bring water, begin to sprinkle water and catch it, you will see here today, up here is full. There are people that are looking for signs and wonders. They want sweet doctrine. They want easy doctrine. They want something that will not make them go. In fact, they even want to not die an entire evil like that without suffering. That is the Christianity today. That is why, you see, we cannot make impact in the world. Christians cannot make impact again in the world. Because they have made the world to be like the church. The church is being like the world. That is why you cannot make impact on the Muslims. Because they look at you and say, which God is this one serving? See this one, you see him in Bia Palo. They are the one in the nightclub. They are the one dressing like a lot. And they say we should leave our religion to come and join them. Even our religion is more respectful. More, it, they have more fear of God than them. That is why you see you can't make impact in their life. You can't make impact in their life. You will be how many years? You can't win one Muslim. Because your life is not showing. God is not with you. Your Christian life having K leg. God is not pleased with you. When you carry the cross, it shows the value of his priceless gift that he has for you in heaven. God will really know that you truly want to have that reward in heaven. When God is seeing you suffering, they are persecuting you for God. Because you give your life to Jesus, you stop sinning. Your friend deserted you. Your church persecutes you. Your neighborhood, they are laughing at you. But you still stand. You say, no, no more boyfriend. No more girlfriend business. No more smoking. No more drinking. No more lying. No, I'm going to do my restitution. I cannot be in the office where I cannot take bribe again. I want to be different. People will start hating you. Your own is like this. Your own is like this. God like it when you are passing through this suffering. But many Christians don't want it. Little persecution. Say, hey, my husband say, if I don't go back to our former church, if I don't dress away, he will divorce me. <laughs> I told some people that, you like it or not, if Jesus tarry, either Jesus will come and then people, you will leave the house or your dead body will leave the house. This marriage. So, please, be careful of what you are doing. Check your life. You need to tell the world that Jesus is the most important treasure to live and suffer for. When you carry the cross, that is the significance of the world. That is what the world is saying. That this person really loves Jesus. This person has abandoned everything for Jesus. Moses abandoned the, the treasure, the riches, the wealth, the, the praises of, of being Pharaoh's daughter and go and suffer with, his, with, his, with, with God's children because he know that if I suffer with these people, my reward will not be suffering. It's going to be an enjoyment. It's going to be a peace. But being suffering in Pharaoh's house where God is now aware, after we, this world, God has, given them, God has given sinners this world. Satan is the prince of the, 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 the world. He's the one controlling he has the, all the enjoyment. That's why you see cultist people, when they go and give to the center hotel, I will give you riches. They will be rich. They have this world, but eternal life, they don't have it. They don't have eternal life. So Moses was wise. Moses was looking for eternal life. Let me leave this enjoyment in Pharaoh's house. Let me go and join God's people as, as slaves. Let me go and suffer with them. Let me go and suffer with them. At the end, I will have eternal life. He carries his cross. But t today, Christians don't want to carry the cross. Many people are entering redeemed church. As soon as they saw me, some people are the same like this. In one redeemed church in um, Apo, they invited us one small parish. 
the pastor read that the book when there. As soon as I entered the church, I never know the people knew me. As they say, so eh, Sister Linda, she will come and be telling us, hell, 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 carry their bag around. They don't want hard doctrine. They don't want the truth. I look at man, I pity man. Because you are running from the true word that will transform you. It better you had the true word now and decided to follow this true word that you go and get it hard in hell. It will be hard for you. Pastors don't want this truth. No, no, don't bring Pastor Rika to my church. He will scatter my church. Why? Because he's preaching holiness. That is the only thing. He will come and take my members away. He will come and scatter my flocks. He will come and make my children to be stubborn. They will begin. I don't want. No, 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 no. You can see. You have some pastors who say, let the Holy, Holy Spirit convict them. If he are a sin, but me, I can never preach it. Fear of many people love hearing. And the pastor knows that the day you open your mouth and preach it, women that love the world than the things of God, they will go. And surely the church will reduce because the Bible told us that this world loves darkness rather than light. That is true. If a pastor like this, a church like this, they have never heard about holiness, the day you preach holiness, many will go because they will say, ah, our pastor, this thing is telling us I cannot do all. And the pastor too, because of fear, of the money will reduce because it's not for the soul. It's because of the tithe and offering will reduce. They will push it. So many people, be careful where you go. They have caught in their cross. The Lord is not with them. Hallelujah. A discipleship demands sacrifice. If you want to follow Jesus, it demands sacrifice. That, that is very clear. You cannot follow Jesus and you don't have something to go and tell Jesus what you suffer for. Because everybody that is there, one way or the other, suffer for Jesus. The disciples suffer for Jesus. They did not acquire heaven freely, cheaply. They suffer. Some were beheaded. They went to heaven. And you too, when you go there, you must say something. Because Jesus too will tell you something, I die for you. I suffer for you, just to save you. What did you do for me? You spend your, your earthly life going to a nightclub, wedding, buying I shall be, going for carnival, eating and dancing in the church. Oh, this is your year. You are busy in prosperity church, enjoying dancing. You don't know suffering at all. You don't know what it takes to pay the price for Christ. You don't know what it means to be, a, to be persecuted. Some people don't even know what is persecution. Me, I said it. I didn't know what was persecution before. In my Christian race those days, what is persecution? In fact, a pastor talked to me, Ashley, I'll say, is it not because I'm in your church? I'll take my back, join another church. If a pastor rebuke me in the church and say, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I'm angry. I say, it's because I'm in your church. You will take your bag and join another church, and another church will welcome you very well. So we don't know what is persecution. All these things, they say, Jesus, saw a, a disciples suffer for Christ. We were only seeing them that it was in their days for we... Since my pastor said that Jesus has paid the price for us, all the suffering, Jesus has paid the price. So we believe in that. And that is the doctrine some of you have had. And they have lied to you that we are under grace. It's by grace we'll go to heaven. You don't need to suffer. Jesus has paid the price. Dress the way you want. Come anywhere you want it before the presence of the Lord. I want to tell you, it is not anyhow you dress before the Lord. The Lord accepts you. Many Christians today are not able to put to death their pains. You have to crucify yourself. have to crucify your ideas. Oh, this is how I will serve God. No, it is how God wants you to serve him. Oh, this is my plans for being a Christian. This is how I'm going to do. No, it's the plan of God. Oh, this is my desire. Many of you come to church for what God will do for you. God, I heard that there's going to be a, a crusade. People are coming from Abuja. I'm carrying my long list. This is what I want you to do for me. Yes, he will do it for you. But what have you been doing for God? What have you been doing for God? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his holiness. And all other things shall be added unto you. But today the churches have turned it upside down. They, 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 seek, it, they seek the other things first than God. You come to church, you are a sinner. You hear the word that God don't want you to be in second marriage. You are still a second wife. You are still a divorcee. You still carry... 
They are costing on your body. The Lord is telling you fornication cannot take you to heaven. You are not married. You have boyfriend. You have allergies. God is telling you that you are adulterous. You are a young boy. You still have girlfriend. The Lord is telling you married men, adulterers will go to hell. You still have your concubine and you still sit before God. The Lord is telling you that don't take bribe. The Lord said don't give bribe. But in your office you do corruption. You give bribe for promotion. All these things that you call yourself Christian. You are not going anywhere. Nowhere. Let us tell you the truth. It's very hard, but that is the truth. If you want to enjoy the blessing of God, you must be obedient. Obey his commandments. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Are you sure you are not stealing? Are you sure some of the things in your house is not government property? You say it's government cake. Everybody is sharing. And you have carried one of the fan from the church, the laptop, the television. They want to renovate the office. You quickly carry, carry and put in your house. And you are busy watching. Uh, and God knows that it's for we to be listening message. That television is not of God. All the message that is coming here, Satan have hijacked the power on it. Because the television was not given to you rightfully. Are you sure you are not having accost things in your house? They can carry their accost things among him. It was with him. And God said, I'm not going with the children of Israel because they can have carried their accost things among you. Only one man. Are you sure your children are living righteously? Pastor, you call yourself pastor. Are you sure your children are born again? Are you sure they're not giving strange fire? You have turned the church to family property. Your wife is the one doing this. Your children are the one in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the financial department. Your wife is the one keeping the money. You, everything is your family. Are you sure the Lord is happy the way you are running the church? Are you sure you are a true child of God? When you go out for doing evangelism, your mind is, after you finish preaching in the book, please give me offering. The Lord, your mind is on the offering. Are you sure you are going out for soul? Are you sure you are dressing well? Men are not lusting after you. All this seductive dressing. Are you sure? Young boy, are you sure you don't have girlfriend? Are you sure you are not masturbating? Are you sure you are not watching pornography on the internet? What are you doing in the university? Are you sure you are not doing expo? You are not bribing? All these things. You see Christian doing abortion. They are not married, they are doing abortion. These are the things that when you are doing it, the Lord is not with you in your Christian race. But you are busy running. Drinking, alcohol, Saturday, Sunday, people go to beer parlor. That is the best. Ah, this weekend, we'll do party, throw party. And most of this nightclub you see, you see Christians there. And they will, be, they will be telling you, we are the light of the world. Muslims are not going to heaven, we are the world. But all the sinful joints, Christians are more there. How will the Lord be happy? All these things I'm showing you, you will come and see the side of the Muslims. All these ones are Christian youths. Drinking and smoking, prostitution. And the same people go to church, give tithe and offering. The word in the pulpit today is not putting fear of God in the Christians. Go all over the world today. One of our members is talking against NYSC trusters that they should give up short. The, the, our senator that is with us told us that when he gave the option in the House of Senate, all the Muslim senators agree with him and say it's true, but the people that disagree are the, senator, the Christian senators. That is it. And you say, God, come and fight for us. The Christians in Nigeria, majority of them that carry the vote, God is not with them. Their doctrines is polluted. They are not teaching the right thing. Their women are naked. Immorality, lusting, all kind of sin that you are thinking of is happening in the church. I had one of the ladies that was following T.B. Joshua as a disciple. She was confessing that one time she, she dictated that she was pregnant for one of the disciples, the, one of the wise men. And she was crying. And one of the friends said, ah, Why are you crying now? Underneath the church, they have a, they call a doctor, they do the abortion for her. She quickly came up and went to the choir and started singing. And people will be in the church be singing, oh, hallelujah. And the people in the choir just finished doing abortion. One of them, God is there. You waste your tithe and offering in those kind of church. That's why you sow, you don't reap. That's why you cry, the Lord don't answer. Take your Christian life seriously because the Bible says salvation is personal. Salvation is personal. It doesn't mean that because you are husband and wife, two of you must go to heaven like that. It takes the grace of God and the determination of the wife and the husband. To go to heaven together. But it can be that your husband and wife, the wife will go to hell and the husband will go to heaven. Because the wife was not serious, the husband was serious. Come to that point that salvation is, is personal. 
But if you are playing with your salvation, you say you are a disciple, but you are cutting your cross. You have turned back as Lot's wife. Disobedient. The Lord said, run to the mountain. The angel said, run to the mountain. Don't turn back because the Lord is going to rain down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. When they were running, Lot's wife, disobedient woman, her heart is still on the things of the world. She turned back. Many of you have turned back. Many of you, you give your life to Jesus, you surrender with all your heart, you repented, you were a true born again Christian for how many years ago. But few times now, you have turned back, compromising. We are in a Muslim now. If you don't do this, they will not, if you, don't, you have to do like this, you have to do that. Compromising. Oh, in this our office, compromising. And you say you want to go to heaven? You can't go. Because why I'm telling you like this, I saw hellfire with my eyes. The crowd of people that is there. You will know that God is serious. <laughs> he said, I will cast all nations that forget God to hell. He don't say one city, one church. You are busy saying, can God send all of us to hell? He said, nation. I, is your church more than a nation? If a nation sin against me, I will cast them to hell. What about church? What is church? How many members? The highest is how many thousand? You must fear God. Fear God. Today, examine your life. Is God, is Jesus still with me in this my Christian race? This my Christianity, I'm saying, are you sure Jesus with you? You are busy talking, singing, this, but you are a witch in the church. And you say you are going, which heaven? Which Jesus? Which Jesus? We must be careful because man is like a grass. Man is like a grass. You don't know the time you will die. Turn with me to Psalm 103. Man is like a grass that will fade away. You don't know the time you will die. You don't know the time you will die. Verse 15. Psalm 103, verse 15. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know, shall know it no more. You will see a grass growing very well or a flower growing very well during rainy season. Ah, this flower is very good. After some time, a heavy wind will come and blow. The flower will die. The place, you will not even know that there was roses growing there. That is how a man's life is. You that you are thinking your life is your own. You are telling God, you are even giving God, when I'm 40 years, I'm going to do this. It's when I'm 60. That time, I would have saved more. That time, I cannot serve God. It's when I'm 60 years, when I retire, then I cannot go full-time with God in holiness, but now I cannot be old. You are giving God time. As if you know you are the one going to give yourself 60 years. Are you sure you are going to be 60, 80, 30, 20? Some youth are not going to enter 20 years. Some will be saying, hey, for now, let me finish my exam before I will give my life to Jesus. You have seen many NYSC. Even in the camp of NYSC, they die. All their suffering, study, they did, need, they did not start working. They didn't even eat their, their, their labor. Don't play with God. If sin is in your life, and you know that this sin will hinder me, immediately you hear repent. You are a Christian. I want to tell you, Christian in Nigeria, we are among many things. One, death can come at any time. Two, we are among Boko Haram people. Anywhere, bomb blasts. You will be going like this, you hear bomb blasts. Some people will go inside the car, there is 2014. We were in our house early in the morning. We were doing devotion, me and daddy. And then we had bomb I see around 7, 7.30. The house was shaking. I said, ah, what is that? We put on the news. It was people who was going to Nanya side. They were in the car, that bomb blast 2014. Some people, when they showed that they were on their steering like this, they born and die. When I saw it, I said, oh God, these ones now, majority of them, maybe they did not make it. They are busy of job, job. Because at that time, it was early morning, 6, 6, 6, 37. They are running to go to work. Their mind is full of job. They don't have time for God. Sin is in their life. And now they never know that they were going to die tomorrow. And they die somewhere in the stairway like this. Some was running, they fall down. And you see big, fine cars, burnt. Some have stolen money to buy that car. <laughs> my sister, my brother, this life is like flower. Pastor, 
your church, you are not, when you die, you come to know that when God will show you your church, you will just see goats. You God will say, all these people you gather for me, none of them is coming to heaven because sin is smelling in their midst. All your message you were preaching was not having any impact in them. Then you call yourself a pastor, a shepherd, a good shepherd, somebody that is bringing the flock to, the heaven, to heaven. Check your life. Is God still with you in that marriage? A woman, you challenge your husband. Your husband talk while you talk five. You even beat your husband. You don't respect your husband. You are secretive. Many things you are doing, your husband don't know. You, the husband, the Bible says love your wife. You have girlfriend. You beat your husband. You love your, you respect your family world. You dic- your family dictate to you. It's what you will come and do to the woman in the house. The woman is not, you, go, you don't see the woman together as if you are one. And you say you want to go to heaven. Christian homes, today so check them. Are they okay? The Christians are the ones doing divorce more than any other religion. And divorce is a sin. But today you see people divorcing. The pastors will even be telling them, if the woman is not ready, leave him. Leave her. Married again. The pastors are the ones disobeying God's word. When God says, what I've joined together, let no man put asunder. Are you sure this is your ministry you are suffering for? This is your Christianity you are profaning? This is your, your zeal you are showing in the church? Are you sure Jesus is approving your Christian life? Your children are full of disobedience. You can't train them. If you cannot train your home, how can you be a, a leader in the church? Are you sure God is happy with you? You can't control your wife. You do whatever you want. Scatter the church. Everybody knows that pastor is afraid of the wife. Are you sure God is happy with you? Check it very well. It is not to come to church only. It is not to raise up your hand. It's not about only singing. It's only, oh, the Lord speak to me. Or you are speaking in tongues. Or you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. Or you have bowl. Oh, I'm the one winning souls. Yes, it's a gift. But what takes to heaven is holy life. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Are you holy, brother? All the winning souls. Are you sure you don't have anger? Are you sure you are not full of disobedience? Are you sure you are not full of backbiting? You will be laughing. Mommy, how are you, ma? Daddy, how are you? But behind there, you, create, you disrespect them. You backbite them. Are you sure your life is not like that? You have two tongues. A Christian should not have two tongues. Let your ear be ear and your no be no. If you are saying good about Pastor Rika, behind him before you say it good. Even before people say it good. But you say good before Daddy Rika. Daddy, our father, behind him, you join concern bread and stand on him. That is not a Christian behavior. You are not going to heaven. That's why many people, when they die, the Lord will say, depart from me. So check yourself today. I'm running up. Check yourself. Are you sure the Lord is still with you? In the church, you call yourself church leaders. All of you are inside a company. You know how to run the church. Any one of you that, anyone that is standing for truth, the remaining four or five, let's fight this one. You don't want us to leak. He's the one reporting us to headquarters. He's the one standing against us. They will fight against that sister, that brother, to remove the person from the committee. Because when that person is there, we cannot do corruption <laughs> in the church. And they say they want to go to heaven. We must be careful. Following Jesus is easy way. It's an easy way of running your life. It's a smooth way where you are following Jesus. If you want to follow Jesus in a smooth way, it's very easy. But I want to tell you, the true commitment to him is revealed by doing trials. If you truly follow God, it's when you are passing through trials, temptation. That is the good way. That is how you will show that truly you love God. Since 2013, I have my encounter and I gave my life genuinely to Jesus. I have now become a Christian. Then I now know that the world hates the truth. Then I now know what it means to be persecuted as a Christian. Then I now know how the disciples, they suffer for Christ. Because Peter, Paul, they were doing their life. Nobody was persecuting them. But from the day they said they are disciples of Jesus, persecution started on them. Then I now know that, oh, truly there must be difference between a child of God and the child of the world. And the child of the world will fight the child of God because they are going to be different in everything. Because since that day, even to my own church, my pastor that I was praising, my pastor that I was saying is a good pastor, turned against me and began to persecute me. My own brethren in the church, former church, up to today, some don't even want to hear. They even, cannot even pick my call because they say, please, please, that is your own doctrine. We don't want to hear. People that all of us sing in the choir, now they don't want to hear me. 
up to today, Sister Lina is passing through persecution. Now I know that, oh, you must pay the price. So I'm talking to you. I was like that, following Christianity the way I want, running my life the way I want, dressed to church the way I want. Anything I want to do, I do it. All, what, all I thought that was matter is to come to church. I should pay my tithe. I should sing in the choir. I should render service. After church, I believe the, that my life is in my hand. I've left God in the church. So from church, if I want to go to boyfriend, I go. If I want to go to a night club, I go. Because Sunday night club is very sweet, as we used to say in our country, Saturday, Sunday. If I want to go to the beach, I go. If I want to go anywhere, I go. That was the Christianity I was doing until that fateful day. So February 15, 2013, I had an encounter. In this encounter, I saw myself with many people heading to a destination I can't tell. I want you to listen to me very well because you don't know when this thing will happen to you. It comes upon me, I didn't know that that day I'm going to see a place called Hellfire. I'm going to leave this world. It was by the grace of God. I don't know why God decided to send me back to this world. I should have been there for seven years now. But God decided that no, go back. I want to use you. God chose my death experience as an encounter so that I can be a disciple to tell people the truth. So when this thing happened to me in my house, I was there with friends. My life left my body. I don't know if you believe it or not, but me, I'm telling you, my soul came out of my body and I went somewhere, a place I don't know, a place my pastor has not prepared me for. Because in my church, they say hellfire message is a scary message that don't scare people. So we don't preach hell in our church. We only talk about heaven, talk about the beauty of heaven, talk about prosperity, talk about the good life of Jesus. Everything good about God, we preach it. But the other side of judge, God is a judgment. God, God, judge. My pastor don't preach it. So this place I was going, I was not prepared to be there. I didn't even know the place. I came to know about hellfire through the mouth of my younger sister, Finda, because she came from Holiness Church. A little thing, she would tell you, hey, we should be careful, oh, so that we will not miss heaven. I said, all the time you talk about missing heaven, well, nobody will miss heaven, because anybody that gives life to Jesus will never miss heaven. That was my belief. I believe that those that don't believe in Jesus are the only people that go to hell, but all Christians will go to heaven. She told me, no, God said judgment will start from the south because there are many Christians in the house that are not for him. I said, it's not true. Until that faithful day, I saw myself walking with people. As we were going like this, heat from nowhere, I was confused. What is happening to me? What is this? And then I saw demons at the entrance of this dark tunnel. And I was among crowd of people, nakedness. We were naked. Nobody was wearing clothes. It's only when you go to heaven because heaven, they will clothe you with a garment of righteousness. But hell, hell nakedness. So, as we were going like this, at the tunnel, I saw demons. Then I was like, hey, what am I saying? In that place, the way they dragged me into that tunnel, I was surprised. I was so in shock that I can see demon life with my eyes. Why I was surprised? In my church, I've given my life to Jesus. I'm singing in the choir. I was a good girl, a church girl, all these things. So, we are the one binding Satan. We are the one killing Satan with our mouth. Ah, what am I doing among demons? No, I'm supposed to be in heaven. Truly, I never have a slightest idea those days, my Christianity, that a Christian will go to hell. No, I believe that all Christians will go to heaven because we go to church. We accept Jesus. We believe Jesus. So I was not thinking hellfire is for me. So when the demon dragged me into that place, when I reached in that place, I saw light of fire. I asked myself, which place is this? As a Christian, I don't know what Mark chapter 9, verse 40, 40, from 41 to, to downward, when the Bible says, it is better for you to go to heaven with one hand than to go to hell fire, where the fire will not quench. Those days, I don't know what all those things, I don't even hear it. A place, fire, hell, No. That is the damage. That is the destruction that many souls are in in the wrong church. 
you don't you are not prepared you don't know the terrible place called hellfire because if you know that that line will land you in a place so terrible you will be praying and binding the spirit of lie if you know that fornication will take you to hell if you close your eye you will stop boyfriend business and start praying for god, god to give you your own husband if you know that all these evil things you are doing this naked seductive dressing that you are putting on will if i sleep i did not wake up now will take me to a terrible place i'm telling you many girls many boys will not be dressing recklessly but in the church they are not telling them they see hellfire like prison in fact nobody believed they will go to hell so this was what happened to me. So when I saw that, I was like, which place is this? Ha! Then I saw people burning inside this fire. And as they are burning, they are not dying. They are still alive. But they are burnt to the point that you cannot recognize. You cannot know who is who. Fire everywhere in their body. But these people are still shouting, Mercy! Lord, show us mercy! Father, give us water! Jesus! I was like, what is this? I've never seen a thing like this. On earth, when somebody born, the person die. You, there's a degree of born, you can't live. But this one, I've even passed the degree. They are burnt. Their eyes have come out. Their mouth is tear. Their body is cold. But this call is still asking for mercy. He's still asking for mercy. He's still asking for mercy. And in that place, it's only one name that is reigning there. On earth, we have different names that people believe on. But it was only Jesus. Everybody, Jesus, show us mercy. Jesus, we know you now. Jesus, we will serve you now. Jesus, I will repent of my sin. Jesus, send me back to the world. Jesus, I will, so I will, I will repent. Jesus, it is hot here. Mercy, mercy. Lord, Lord, I was confused. I said, which, what am I seeing? You man been living like this? This place is not art. Where is this place? How did they call this place? I was confused. My heart was beating. What am I seeing? How can I get out of this place? Where is the door? How did I come in? Everywhere dark. Fire everywhere. I said, God, I started feeling. I will hear the torture of people. My eyes, my door, mercy. It is hot here. Jesus, have mercy on us. And I said, God, God, Jesus, show me mercy. Jesus, show me mercy. Which place is this? I said, Christian, we're not supposed to be there. And then I saw three demons walking towards me, coming straight to my front. And they carry me to a place and put me there, chain me. And then one of them came in front of me and did his hand to me like this. You disobedient child, Linda, you disobedient child. All these things you are doing, you are going to Abalis, you are hiding. Pastor, you go and take charm. You'll be looking like this. Nobody will see you. Women, you go and collect charm. Men, you go, all these things. You are hiding from man. You can't hide from God. Even the demons have seen you. When they were telling me my sin, I was surprised. How did they know? Because there are some sins, it was in the night we would do it. And then the demon called my name, Linda. How did he know my name? And then he said, are you not afraid to disobey God? Satan, demons, the one telling me, am I not afraid to disobey God? And then I said to myself, how did I disobey God? God, me, I know I love Jesus. Even before knowing God in this way. In my former church, I love Jesus. Because I know that truly is the way, is the truth, and the life. And nobody that don't love Jesus will go to heaven. I love Jesus. Then I was surprised. Why did I, why are they saying I don't love God? Then the demon started telling me sins. That's why I said today, check your life. Are you sure your Christian life is perfect before God? Are you sure you are still running this race with Jesus? Or you are just running your, your, you know, this relay, they used to give you baton. We call it baton in our country, this stick. 
to run to pass it to the other person, you have dropped the stick. And you are not busy running. When you read, they disqualify that. You did not bring the baton. That is how many Christians are running. That is how I was running my life. So the demon now told me certain things that I was doing. Some, truly, some, I know they are sinful. I know it that they are sinful. Like lying, abortion, boyfriend, drinking, alcohol. I know these things that they are sinful. But how to stop them, I didn't know. And one of the things that make me not to be bothered, my pastor will lie. I know. He'll, sometimes he will say some things. We will look at ourselves in the choir and say lie. The choir master sometimes will say lie. These are the people we should copy from. During the Christmas time, we'll go to the beach. We'll see Papa with Mama swimming in the, in the, in the beach with boxer. We'll see them. Sometimes my friend, they are in Catholic church. We'll go to Catholic carnival. They call it carnival night. Now December is coming. Our country is like that. Boxing day, you have, you have Catholic going. So you will see some people where you say, hey, hey Father, you say, don't Father me here. They are in the beach. to call it bonfire. We have seen this thing. We see men of God different. Sometimes when you go to a club, they have some dark side. They write a VIP for big people that you don't want to see them. But when you go there as a lady, you go there, you will surprise to see some people say, ah, it's just, you will do, I say, forget about those things. You see pastors, the way you're not supposed to see them. You see Christians, you see elders in the church. You hear rumor, elders sleep with a girl, pregnant again, they want to, and they will be covering the church. So those things, I now say, ah, God understand. If our leaders, they are doing it, God knows that nobody can be righteous. I comforted myself like that. But the other things that Satan was telling me, that attachment, all these things I was putting on, bleaching my skin, putting on perfume, putting earrings, six earrings on my ear, tattoo my body, all these things. I didn't know it was a sin. I didn't know God don't want it at all in our body. Ah, when the devil was telling me, you know the Bible said that you should not do this? I was confused. Which Bible? If you know the Bible, my pastor will be Tony, Tony. But why he did not reach to this point to be telling me God don't want all this makeup on our body. God don't want us to turn the truth, change the truth into a lie. God don't want to, because I was deep in fashion. I like attachment. I was not proud of my natural face. I thought that I was not beautiful without makeup. I never thought that my lip is good without lipstick. I never thought that my natural hair is long like attachment. I was not appraising the way God made me. My nails, because of putting on all these false nails, I was almost having weak low. Because the, the glue is very hot. It was eating my natural nails. I was just proud of artificial things on my body. Bleaching my skin. Just putting all those things. So, and when you go to church, the pastor will be praising you. So when the demons were telling me these things, I was, I was just shaking. Because my younger sister told me. But because I'm not in his church, I say it's your church doctrine. If we in our church is not like that. He said, no, my sister. It is the Bible. I say, no. Our pastor too is opening the Bible. We have never said it. So it's not in our own church. That is how many of you, you are in the church where the pastor will tell you that what I say here is final. Don't bring other doctrine here. And you have been deceived. You will die before your bishop. You will die before your reverend. You can die before anybody in the church. And you will go. And they, some of them, they will repent. They will come to know this truth. And cry and say, God, I never know. He happened to Saul the apostle. How many people he killed? How many people he persecuted? Some went to hell, but Saul went to heaven. Because he came across Jesus at the end. So salvation is personal. Don't say my pastor did not say. My pastor is not telling me this. I cannot believe Sister Linda. I'm telling you, it is for your good. When I was tortured... And then the demon told me that I am a murderer. I look at myself, me, I've never killed anybody in my life. On art, killing is when, like what these Boko Haram people are doing, is killing. You carry gun, kidnap a shoot, is killing. Go to a abalist and kill somebody, is killing. But I've never done anything like that since I was born. Yes, I go to abalist. My going to abalist is to, is to do my body, yes, so that I will have luck. Anywhere I go, I can make money, fine. That was my own. I don't have time to kill anybody. But when the demon called me a murderer, I rejected it. I said, no, I'm not a murderer. I've never killed in my life. No, I'm not a murderer. You people should not torture me for that. I am not a murderer. And the demon looked at me and laughed and said, you are not a murderer. I answered, I yes, I've never killed anybody in my life. They look at themselves and laugh at me and say, 
all the abortions you were doing, were they animal you were killing? Were they animal? My mouth closed because it was not animal. They were human being, and they I killed them. I was shocked. I was shocked. How many of you have done abortion in the church? You are still doing. Even for pastor, you are doing. Cover it up. You are still doing, young girl. And you say you want to go to heaven? How many of you have sleeping with your uncle, your aunt in the house? You say you want to go to heaven. You have not confessed those things. I'm telling you, when you go to hell, you will know that every sin, little sin you call this little thing, some people put here, say this little yearly, you will now know the great punishment for that little thing. That's why when the Lord sent me back, I say, even if the world say I'm not beautiful, I'm not, nothing can make up, we come close even to my bedside or even to my area. I don't want it alone. Hearing we never call, even this old sometimes I say, ah, if God will give me grace to remove. I don't want anything that will give me stain before God. I've made a mistake, it's a mistake and I'm regretting it. But you will sit in sin, eat in sin, laugh in sin. Even in holiness church, some people are doing sin. No fear. I want you to fear, even if you're a witch or you're a wizard. I want you to fear. That, that profession, you're a witch, you're a wizard. I want to tell you, your ending, you will regret why you allow that demon to possess you. You did not confess for deliverance. Because hellfire is not a place. When Jesus took me to hell, when I saw people in hell, I saw my mother in hell. She died as a Muslim. She didn't believe in Jesus. And in hell, he was telling God, Jesus, now I believe in you. Jesus, please show me mercy. My daughter, please don't leave me here. Please tell Jesus to show me mercy. And I look at Jesus. I say, God, we the Christians, you know, in our country, my mother was a Muslim, my father was a Christian. We didn't preach to her. We thought that we are serving the same God. We leave her. Sometimes she is praying here. We are going to church. We just play about it. But when I saw my mother in hell, I regretted my life. I hated myself because truly she didn't know. We that call ourselves Christians, we know we have the truth. We didn't make impact in our life. We didn't hold her and say, Mommy, no. You cannot go to that religion. It is not the way. But we laugh with her. We even used to buy a dress for our fasting. We give her money for our fasting. We contributed to our hellfire. That's why up to today is paining me. It's like I sent my mother to hell. I am talking to you because I don't want you people to go to hell. Christians are going to hell. Jesus said, I didn't make this place for them. You people know me. Christians, you know me. I am the way. But what are you choosing to do as if you don't know the way? The way you are doing the Christianity is not the right way. When I saw my mother, I felt it in my heart. He said to me, my daughter, don't leave me. I beg you. My daughter, please don't leave me. He stretched his hand to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, please, I will worship you now. I grew up in a religion that didn't tell me you are the way. Jesus, please show me mercy, I beg you. Jesus, please show me mercy. And the Lord looked at me and said to me, go and want the Muslim on earth that didn't believe in me. I am their savior. I am their Lord and Savior. And then he looked at my mommy and said to my mother, Jesus called my mother, my daughter, even when she is in hell, he said, my daughter, it is too late for you now. But you can send a message to your siblings. And I said to Jesus, please, don't allow my mother to go to the hell. And then Jesus looked at my mother and said, it is too late. As soon as he said this command, it is too late. The fire came and embraced my mother and took her again. She was shouting and looking at me. I look at my mother literally. She was sinking into the fire. I look at Jesus. I said, God, please. We didn't want her. We didn't preach to her. We didn't tell. It is our fault. We didn't tell. We live in the house going to church. We didn't force her to go to church. Jesus is our fault. I beg you. And 
And Jesus said to me, I am God, I'm not a man. My word cannot come back in vain. When I come to you, you are finished. When I say depart, you are finished. I am sending you so that you will want those one in here. You will want them on earth. And then the Lord took me to a place. And then I saw another person came out. I look at this person. I cannot recognize the person. My best friend in the same college we attended together. I cannot remember her. She died two years before my conversion. She was kneeling before God. She came out of the fire. She was looking like a demon. She was being bored. And then he said, Lord, show me mercy. Jesus show me mercy. I look at Jesus' face. I look at the person. Who is this? Who is this person? I was just seeing mystery in my eyes. These people have burnt. Their eyes have come out. Their body is dropping like fire. Everything about their body has been burnt. Some of them, their head has been exploded. But these people are still talking. These people... I say, ask him for mercy. I would just say, what is happening in this place? And then he said to the Lord, please, Lord, show me mercy. And then the Lord said, my daughter, Jesus know all of them. I, I don't know them. If it's a man, I cannot say this is a man. Jesus will say, my son, my daughter. There is no secret before the Lord. Fear God. He said, my daughter, is this a woman? Who is this person? And then he said, it is too late. You can send a message to your father. And then Jesus knew what was in the heart of my friend. Because as Jesus said like that, that was exactly what my friend said. Jesus, if you cannot save me, if you cannot show me mercy, please, Answer my heart desire. Let my father come here. Please bring my father here. Then he now said, Linda is guilty. Linda, you don't know me again. I help myself. I say, God, what have I seen today? People I love, are the, the people I love. I thought they are in heaven. They are here, buddy. What is happening to me today? Then I say, Kipti, you didn't make heaven. What happened? Because we believe you are a pastor daughter. We went for your burial. The father preached there. My daughter is resting with Jesus. We dance behind your coffee. They dressed you very well. Put your pink garment. Decorate her face with attachment. That time we didn't believe the attachment was seen. You see the painter very well. I said, what? Jesus turned to me and said, the pastors that have turned my church into their business, they think the church is for them and their family. They are not preparing their children for heaven. They are turning the church and pleasing their children and their family. They have turned my church upside down. Ha! Huh. Go and tell the father that he has sent somebody to hell. Rather to me that he says working for. What is he going to say? You, you call yourself pastor. A pastor is somebody that is working for God. And now you are sending people to Satan. You are not for God. That is what God will say. I should tell the Father. If you are for me, you will work for me. People that are in different parties, APC, PDP, when they are working, they promote the party name. But you, you say you are a man of God, but you are promoting the kingdom of Satan. You are increasing soul in hell. And you call yourself pastor. You call yourself evangelist. You call yourself leader. Many pastors will regret why they were working for Satan. Some of you, you don't know. Because your church member, majority, are for Satan. The Lord took me out of that place. The Lord took me to the place of pastors. Call them in all kinds of names. I saw them, I pity them. I never wished to be a pastor, what I saw there. I never wished to say, oh, let me be a leader in the church. Because what I saw there, I say, hey, this position that people are fighting for on earth, if you don't follow the way of God in your pastoral cause, this, this is the place 
I prefer I be an honorary member. Because the torture of these pastors, these leaders in the church, call them in all title, the, the, the place where God puts them, the suffering is too much that even me, I cannot behold it. I cannot see them. They are mixing like they are cooking them in the pots. They are, they are being tortured. They are crying. They are gnashing their teeth. They are, it's like they are rooting themselves. They are crying. They are regretting. Some even wish never to be called a pastor or a preacher or a bishop when they come back to earth. They are begging God with all their heart, all the confession they did not do here. You will hear them confessing their sins. God, I'm a woman. I said, God, I was a cultist pastor. God, I gave false doctrine. God, I invented false doctrine. God, I did this in your house. They are not even seeing God, but they were confessing in the hole, the pits where they are. The smoke is coming up. They are burnt. They are burning. The fire is mixing with them. The Lord said, this is the pit for false pastors, false preachers, false prophets. Go and warn them. Anyone that is not following the way I planted the church will land here. They are here. Many titles. The Lord said, call them in all titles you think of in the world. Pope, bishop, reverend, because of what is happening in the church. What is happening in the church? The Lord took me to a department of the, the kingdom of darkness where Satan was giving a literal things to come and do signs and wonders in the church. Water, handkerchief, comb, apron, uh, oil, uh, they call it blood of Jesus, red substance, ashes, candle, different things, ban, calendar, different things. The devil was telling them, go and bring them. And the Lord was telling me, these are the things that are used in the church today to do signs and wonders. And then he started calling them for me. I am not the God of handkerchief. I am not the God of April. I am not the God in their candle. Anything you are using in that church, you put your faith in. Oh my God, my papa said we should burn candle and pray to him. My papa said we should pray to a staff. We should come our ear front and back. We should wear a promedical is following it. My papa said I should drink this water, drink this oil. I want to tell you if you have done that, you have been defied. You have been defied. You need deliverance. You need to pray. Have mercy. Ask for mercy. Those things, those substances, you see them like my water. They are defiling you. Satan is wise. You can't touch the property of Satan goes God free. You have drank it. You have bet with it. They say we should put it salt. We should put this. We should wear it. We should cover it. Some of you have cloth. Some of you have makeup they give you. You have powder. They will give you. You have perfume. Pastor will tell you all these things they are giving you in the church. I have it those days. When Jesus was telling me, these are not my property. I am still the same God yesterday, today, forever. Prayer is the key. This anointing oil, this water they are giving them for signs and wonders. I've taken the word of God from them, making my children not to seek on me, not to call on me, but they have now been prayerless and Satan have captured them. Because when you wake up in the morning, you are going for an interview, you rub anointing oil. What are you praying for? The anointing oil is doing the miracle. Miracle is when you pray for miracle, but now you have the substance. You don't need to pray again. The Lord says, Satan have hijacked the church. When you go to Abalis, they give you these things. Is it not so? I say, yes, Lord. He said, that is the same thing that is happening in the house of God. They have turned my church into Abalis. They have turned my church into evil substance. All these things are sinful. I was shocked. Even some of this food we are eating, polluted by Satan to kill spiritual man. To kill your spiritual life. That's why you see Christians, they don't pray, they don't fast, they don't do even everything that causes spirituality is dry in their life. The Lord said, I told you people to sanctify every food. You are busy eating. Most of these things they sell in the street, in the market, the people selling it, they are agents of darkness. They pollute it. Those in the church, they give you food. Some of them are polluted. It. Some of these things pastors give you free free rice, free money. Majority of these pastors, they are giving this thing. They are polluted things to capture your soul. The Lord make me to see lots of things. And then and I know that truly the church is dirty. How many people will go to heaven? What the Lord has shown me is too much. I want them to show you some of the things that is happening in the church then around up there. And then you check your life. You check yourself today. All this Christianity... All this love, you say you love Jesus. 
Are you sure the Lord is still with you in your Christian race? Or you have walked ahead like Mary and Joseph, leaving Jesus behind. And Jesus has left them, but they were busy going, thinking their son is still with them. You thinking your Lord is still with you in that church, in your home. Your marriage is not good, no Christian standard. Your children are wayward, no Christian standard. Your offices, your business, some of you, your business you are doing is not standard, it's not good. You, you, do, you, you cheat people, you call yourself Christian. You lie on price. You sell bad things. You sell drugs. You have broken to business. You have nightclub business. You sell drugs. You sell seductive dressing. Some of you sell all this naked thing, jewelry. And you say you call yourself Christian. I'm telling you, it is a pity. It is a pity. Even your money you are giving to church is a polluted money. The Lord said, I'm not a dirty God to receive a dirty money. Some of you, your money is dirty. Some of the youth in the church are the kidnappers. After they kidnap, they disguise, they come and give money, and pastor will welcome them. Some of these corrupt fool out in the office and leaders in the church, they will steal money in the church and come and give a pastor will say, and you think you are pleasing God? You are not pleasing God. Please play some of this video for me. You will see what is happening in the church. All these are bewitchments. You believe God is in the apron. You believe all these things you are doing are serving God. You see FT people serving God. They think they are serving God. You are taking oil, say for miracle. You are putting this, you say, because, see, holy water. Put cross there. You are buying it. It's on your bed outside. Any little sickness you drink, you put all, all kind of church ban on your hand for miracle. I will not die. I will live. You are wasting money on them. You think you are going to heaven like that. You have been defied with those things on your body. You have been defied. You have been defied. Many of you, now God is telling you people, TV Joshua was not from him. All the services he was doing was for Satan. And if you people don't, these ones that are drinking the water you have laid on, or they don't do deliverance on them, bait them, confess their sin, pour, for the Holy Spirit to purge them, you are, you are marked with Satan. You are doomed. Can you see how many people have been doomed? How many people will, will ask for mercy? Play it, please. Show them in the church what is happening in the church. All these doctrines. Play it. What is this? People go to church with cutlass, say they are killing Satan. Is this, is, this, is this what you need now? That's why you see Muslims, other religions, even people that don't believe in God, they don't go to, they laugh at us. Because this is rubbish. This is not doctrine. We are making people to mock God, mocking Jesus. Is this what Jesus died for? Is it what he told the disciples to do? Use cutlass and be following Satan? Can you imagine? And people are zealously doing it, believing that they are going to heaven. Beat your enemy, and you are enemy to yourself. You are enemy to yourself. Can you see? These are not doctrines. You have been there. They have told you, carry sand from your house. Carry your husband clothes. Carry your children's shoe. Carry to the altar. You are just be bewitched. This one, they are putting goats. They say it's, it's Christ. God forbid. And people are bowing worship. And the spirit is entering there. The spirit of God, Satan will enter them. Are you seeing what is happening? Are you seeing? People are praying. Are you seeing? And demonic spirit is taking over there. They say spirit of God. Are you seeing what is happening? Some of you have gone to those places. They have bet you in river. The church you went to, they bet you with, with, with traditional soap or whatever. They have told you many things. You have bet yourself in many places. And you say you are with Jesus. God is not with you. God is not with you. That's why we are suffering in Nigeria. We we'll pray, pray, if not because of the few righteous in Nigeria, that God is showing us mercy. For we to open people, I to turn them from darkness to light. But if, if the majority of Christianity, Jesus is looking upon, and telling you, this Muslim, they have taken over. Many will have died. So you have to come to the right way so that when you pray, your prayer will avail much in Kano. So that God will come down and give you peace. God will make us to have peace in this nation. God will help us to make these people that don't believe in Jesus, we come to Jesus. God will make all these things, we stop. Please pray the other one for them. It's the same God yesterday, today, forever. What he did for the Israelites, other nations, they were afraid of what they had God did in other nations just because of the children of Israel. Is it we that are calling on the name of the God? The Lord will not answer us. But because sin, filthy in our hand, 
Listen to what this pastor is saying. You are in a church like this. All they do is to rob you from your money. They are make you to think that you can bribe God. You are, how you give God, God will bless you. Those doctrines are not from God. You cannot bribe God. God is not looking for money. He's looking for a clean worship, a obedient heart. You give God with your joyful heart. It's not that he's looking for your money. He will bless you without you giving, giving him. But you are giving to support his work. But this pastor, see what he's saying. See what he's saying. Play it. If you have 5,000 naira anywhere around you, bring it out. I'm standing here. If you have 5,000 anywhere around you, if you have 10,000 anywhere around you, if you have four, if you have three, anywhere around you, come and put it in my hand. Bless you. You have 5,000, you have 10. Anywhere around you, come and put it in my hand. If you have 3,000, quickly, come and put it in my hand. That is what you people do. You will suffer in your, in your farm and gather the money and go and give if them from there. If you have ten, anywhere, it's bless you, sir. That's a blessing. If you have five, if you have ten, if you have it anywhere around you, come and drop it in my hand. Your house rent, if your, you your medicine money, come your children's school fee, come and drop it. And you will drop it. Come and drop it in my hand. If you have two thousand, come and drop anywhere around you. If you are outside, just open the door come in. Come and drop it in my hand. Those outside who are watching, let it open for them, let them come and drop it. You have two, you have three, you have four, you have five. Anywhere around you here, come and drop it in my hand. These are not pastors, they are unrobbers. Come and drop it. You have two thousand. God cannot be wicked. You have one thousand. Come and bring you it. You will hear hand. what you will see at the end. Quickly. Quickly. Drop it in my hand. Two, one, three. Drop it in my hand. See the, see the youth. I see people here to go home and remove poverty in their family. You hear? I see people here going home and remove poverty from their family. Where you have removed their money from their hand, how will poverty go? And this is the brainwashing doctrine that is everybody is opening church in different states. That's why we can't take over the state because most of the churches that are opening in different states in Nigeria are polluted denomination. These are not gospel. This is not gospel. What is happening now? Those days we know masquerades. People who fear masquerades. And we know that this masquerade, they have spirit of demons in them. They are evil. We know it. We know it. Masquerades day. People know that it's evil. It's from the sea. But today I'm telling you, Masquerade is welcome in the church. See what is playing. And see the reverend dancing with the masquerade. And when they finish the lay on you, you are blessed. You see masquerade in the church? See the masquerade in the church? And they will call it they will call it a traditional day. You are in that church. You are happy. Ah, we are happy. We are celebrating our African tradition. You are still in tradition. Those that are in Christ, they are not part of tradition. No law. They are not children of God. They don't have any tradition following this, uh, this uh, kind of wicked kind of lifestyle. You don't do things that people do because you are, you are a tribal with them. But see, see, masquerade in the church. And you see the reverend father. See them dancing with cross, with their gown. That they say the gown is holy. You can see. You can see. That's why God has raised up holiness of our movement. We go around to open people's eyes because very soon the Lord is coming. The world is full of sin. God is seeing the earth more than Sodom and Gomorrah. We have seen more than them. Very soon, you will hear the trumpet will sound. Yes, play the other one. You will see Pope. You will see Father. Snapping pictures, masquerades, as if it's a, it's a good thing. You see all this kind of thing, and you are still playing with your Christian life. You see killing everywhere. Christians have been slaughtered every day. You are still playing with your Christian life. You think that if they kill you because of Christ, you are not born again, you go to heaven. Some people, before they kill you, they, they deny Christ. When the Muslim Holy Ghost say, deny Christ, they will deny, hey, fear, hey, I don't want to die, I don't want Jesus again. And the Muslim will say, is it not Satan controlling them? He will say, kill them still. After you have denied Christ, they still kill you. Many that die through this suicide bombing, Boko Haram, whatever, you think they are going to have, some of them, they were not practicing true Christianity. 
God cannot compromise his standard for any man. If you die as a true Christian for his name, you will go to heaven. But if you die as a drunkard, you die as a smoker, you die as a wizard, as a witch, they came to your village and killed Christian, you think you go to heaven? You have to repent of your sin now. Make amends with God now. Be sober with God now. So that if die come, if death come, if rapture come, you will go to heaven. You will not be afraid of death. The Lord will protect you. Nobody will kill you. But if your life is naked, sinners make you to be naked, Satan can take advantage of you at any time. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are sorrowful. So now, if the Lord come now, very soon, the whole world will know that Jesus is Lord. Very soon, the whole world will know. This day is a wonderful day. But only those that are children of God that will ride with the Lord on coming with Jesus to the earth. Are you going to be among? We are singing the song, when you come to collect your people, remember me, O oh Lord. Now is the time you should, you should make the Lord to remember you. Please, play for me the second coming of the Lord. So that you see this day. You are afraid of the Muslims. You are afraid of Kinapa. You are afraid of witches and wizards. They don't have power. Because power belongs to the Lord. Very soon the Muslims will know that Jesus is Lord. Because they will see these things happen. The pagans we know. The secret society people. The cultist people we know. That truly Jesus was Lord. Daddy Rika preached it yesterday. Every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess. That Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father Almighty. Very soon, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will appear. Kano, Nigeria, everywhere in the world. We see our King, our Lord is riding on the wall. Things that have never happened. People will open their mouths. And you are there. You are afraid. The world will see Jesus. You don't want to serve Him with righteousness. You don't want to have this kind of praise. What a glorious reward. When your Muslim neighbor are persecuting you, they will see you riding with the king of kings. The I am that I am. The one that have power. But you are playing with your Christian life. You want to go to hell with them. Repent today. Repent. Before the Lord count you with sin, sinners in hell. It will pain you. You know Jesus and you end in hell. It's a shame. The whole world will see him. The Jesus they reject. The Jesus that says a man. <laughs> Can a man do like this? Which man that have power to ride on the cloud? You will see Jesus. Now, they are now receiving him. The Hindus are now crying. Oh, oh, I never know Jesus. Show me mercy. Hey, hey. Repent. Because this day will soon happen. He's coming with his angels. Coming with the saints. And you will be there in Jesus' name. You have to be sober. Christians in Khan will be sober. Be holy and be righteous. So that God will put power in your mouth. See what will happen. Will be open. That is it. The grave will be open. Even if you have died as a witch, you will come back to life and go for judgment. Then you will know that power belongs to God. Then your witchcraft power is just a small thing. Repent now. And the Lord forgive you. Repent now. See, everybody will come back. Those in hell will come. Those in the sea, everybody will come back to life and stand before the God bones of the for dead judgment. Will be covered with flesh, and they will regain life. Only God can do this. Only God, and God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. Only have the power to do this. Be proud of him. Be Every proud of him. Don't shame to talk about him. Be bold about Jesus. Proud of Jesus. The throne of God. Everybody. Books will be open. Are your name in the book of life? Your Christian life, is it right with God? Everyone, both meek and strong, will stand. Before the throne of Jesus. You are lying. You are in secret society. You are in secret society. You are in court. You are a witch. You are a wizard. You are covering one sin or the other. That day, everybody will know who you are. Are you a true pastor? 
or you're a cultist pastor? Are you an evil man? See, Jesus will appear. Those that don't believe him will be shaking. If you look in the one man standing here, he's shaking. He's shaking. You see. Every person will be judged according to See him shaking. Deed. Maybe he's somebody that don't believe in Jesus. He has insulted Jesus or not. Now he's seeing him and say, hey, so truly it was God. It's too late. Man who set his wife on fire and possessed the man born his wife because he wants to marry another woman. And people believe that the woman died by fire because he wants to marry another girlfriend. One who denied the poor and you are greedy. As a Christian, you should do good. Support the things of God. Help the poor in your midst. But you are greedy. You only keep money to build house in the village, in the city, in the this, in the that. Property upon property. All is vanity. This man sleeping with her own daughter. A father sleeping with a daughter. Pastor sleeping with your daughter. Sister sleeping with brother. Brother sleeping with sister. Uncle sleeping with this. How many of you have done that? And you are sitting on it. A prostitute. You are a prostitute from one office to another. One allergy to another. You are a Christian. See them. That day you will see. A greedy doctor. A greedy doctor. People are sitting waiting for him, but those that have money will go before the patient and bribe him, and they will see them. But when he come, I say, no, I'm close. God will judge you people that day. Every work you are doing, do it genuinely. Don't take bribe. One who had persuaded people to worship man-made up God. Those that are persuading people to worship man-made God. Those anointing oil, apron, they have given it to your church. Worship comb, put comb in your back, comb your hair. There are people that are sending you to worship strange things. They will go to hell. And even you that worship that, they will go to hell. You see? Everybody must have your reward. Man who helps the depressed and proclaims Jesus to many. This man, he was helping the oppressed, proclaim Jesus to them, telling them to serve Jesus. Evangelism was not in vain. You see? Yeah, from old man he has become you. Nobody is all in heaven. You will enjoy life. Your sorrow has ended. A righteous woman who helped the gospel. A righteous woman. She was a tailor. Poverty. She is sewing and be helping the church. The church needy will give. The church needy she will support. See now today. Some of you, you walk, you don't give to the church. They have to be begging you, begging you. You don't think about church. If they don't say buy this for church, you don't buy it for church. You don't think about the house of God. You don't support the kingdom of God. You keep money in your account. When you die, the, the bank will eat it. You see? Those that are persecuted, you have a man. He was taking care of them. Don't worry, God will take care of you. See? You have been changed. Angels are the ones carrying you to heaven. What a escort. What a big surprise. Accepted Christ a woman. with repentance. He hear the word of God. Immediately he hear the word of God. He repent with a clean out. Immediately he repents. The Lord show her mercy. She live a holy life and now she's making it to heaven. But some of you, you will hear the word of God. You have Sister Linda CD, the Dedica message. Holy men of God. You have listened, listened, but you are still in your sin. Some people, only one day they will hear the word of God. They will be sober with God. No more sin again. For you, rise and fall. This one, they kill him for Jesus. They stone him because he's preaching the true gospel. But today, those that kill him, they are standing there, seeing him going to heaven. Anything, your cross, carry the cross. Don't throw the cross away. Whatever you are suffering because of Christianity, which is the true Christianity, it's the cross. All those whose names are written in the book of life will go to heaven. Your enemies will be your footstool. I will anoint your head before your enemy. This is it. They will sit, stand like this. They will be seeing you going to heaven. And those that their name are not in the book of life, both Christian, both Muslim, both uh, pagans that don't believe in Jesus, their names will not be in the book of life. See where they will end. And you Christians that are supposed to be with God in heaven because your God, Jesus, is the way. 
and you follow them. See where you will end with them. Anyone that don't believe that Jesus is Lord, be the richest man. If you say he's a good man, he will never go there. See where they will end. This man is in the hospital now. All his life he was living was worldly life. Gambling, girlfriend, boy, uh, uh, smoking, party. See him, he's a drunk. All this youthful age. You think this is was life. He never knows a useless life. You that you think that this world is a pleasurable thing you should enjoy. You are a fool. Because this world will soon pass away. And the pleasure in it. You waste your money building houses everywhere. You will not sleep in them. They will collapse, become sand. Begin to save your money in heaven. Support the things of God. Buy these book CDs. Give to people. Put part of your salary to support the things of God. Give to a true church that preaches true doctrine. Don't waste your time and offering in this false pastor's church. You see, now you have gone to hell. Who will save him now? The body is there for the family member to dance. But the soul have gone. See now, he has come to a place like this. A place of tears. A place of cry. A place of mourning. A place of regret. A place of torment. Nobody has gone to hell and come and say, I was enjoying there. Anybody that said that is a liar. Hell is a place of torment. A place of sorrow. A place you regret why God created you. A place you will curse your parents why they give back to you. The place you will be angry why you did not follow God. Because you have entered into everlasting suffering. You are suffering forever. Fire will be burning you forever. And you will feel the pain fresh as when you are on earth. The same feeling you are feeling now, you will feel it to him. He's regretting his life now. And you see the end of vanity, the end of boyfriend, the end of girlfriend, the end of stealing, the end of lying, the end of witchcraft, the end. That is the end. Nobody knows when you will die. Are you seeing the end? The sound you are hearing is cry of people. The end of false pastors. The end of false doctrine. What shall it profit you, pastor? You have jet. You are, you are a Jew. You travel. You have 20,000 conversations. But you do not go to heaven. See your end. What shall it profit you? What shall it profit you? I want to marry. I want to marry. You go and marry the Muslim. Marry as a second wife. Now you have died. What shall it profit you now? Your married have in a wrong way of carrying you here. See your life. Repent today. Repent today. Women wearing attachment, makeup, trousers, bleaching your skin. You want to look beautiful. This, this is how you'll be burning. Where is the makeup now? Where is the attachment? Where is the lipstick now? Nobody will know you are even beautiful. See how your life will end. See people in the fire. They are crying to come out. No way of coming out. They are regretting their life. Take it today. Is Jesus still with you? Are you still having sin in your life? Do you have bad attitude? Bad behavior? Are you still righteous? Or you only say Jesus in your lip and your heart is far away? Check it. Check it. Check it. Children, disobedient children. You have been a witch. You are oppressing your parents. You are stealing in the school. You are fighting. You are disobedient. Stubborn boy, stubborn girl. If you die in that act, this is where you will be. Children that are disobedient. Children that are stubborn. Children that don't hear the word of God. Children that lie. They fight. They steal. Go to the school. You steal pencil. Steal money. You lie. If you don't confess it, this is where you will go. Your parents will not help you. Your mommy and daddy will not be there to save you. Fire will be burning you. You will not eat food again. You will not drink water again. So repent of your sin today. Mommy and daddy, pastors, workers in the church. I want you to reflect on hell. This place is real. Wife, you are not obeying your husband. You are disobedient. What will it profit you when you die as a disobedient wife? This is your end. Please, take your life very serious. Salvation is personal. This is it. This is it. 
This is it. A regretful face. This is it. A prostitute. You don't you are not married, you have boyfriends. Sex is for married people, legal married people. Wait until you marry before you begin to do sex. But you are a girl, you are not married, you have boyfriend, girlfriend, everywhere. Boys, masturbation, lying, pornography. This phone in this our youth, their hand, have done many souls to hell. What you are watching there. This is the ending. This is the ending. If you are in a cult, this is your ending. Renounce, denounce all those sinful things. Denounce it. You are going to abolish, stop it today, burn all those charm you have and serve God cleanly. Let be on our feet. Stand on your feet and check your life. Check your life. Are you sure if the Lord come now, you are clean? The worm will bite you. See torment in hell. Nobody is laughing. Everybody is regretting why they sin against God. Why they choose the pleasure of this world. Why they choose money rather than the things of God. Why they were busy pursuing, hustling. Hey brother, you are not coming to chapter me again. I'm coming. It's one contract, one business, my job. You are busy running. You don't have time for God. The God you don't have time for, when you die, you'll be calling. He too will not have time for you. You'll be born here. And you leave all the money you are hustling on earth. Dead people don't hustle anymore. So now, today, you must go back to Jerusalem. As Joseph and Mary went back to Jerusalem to look for Jesus, you must go back today to the Lord. Come back to him and say, God, truly, different sins are in my life. My Christian life is not perfect. Is he lying? Is full in my mouth? Is he anger? Is he evil thought? Is he backbiting? I've even gone to Abalis. Is he doing one thing or the other corrupt act? Is he taking bribe in the office? Is he disobedient? Even fighting with my husband? Is he lying tongue? Is he what? What have I done in the church? Different things. God, truly, and now I know you are not with me. Pastor, check your ministry. Is the people really there? Are they righteous? Or you are busy seeing sinners up and down? Let's close our eyes. Begin to confess your sin to the Lord. It's between you and God. What do you used to think about? Evil thoughts fool your mind. Wishing people evil. You have even insulted God. We are praying for you to deal with this Muslim. You are not answering God. It is God's self. You are speaking foolishly against God. It is a sin. It is a sin. Are you righteous to call upon God? Check your life. You are a sinner. You want God to come and kill another sinner. If God is coming to kill sinner, he will kill you. So that's why he did not answer your prayer. We must be righteous before we pray for God to visit these ones. Tell the Lord to make you righteous. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are holy and you are righteous, you are following the Lord, more grace to you. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. But if you know you are fall short of the glory of God, truly you were born again, but you are backslidden. You need to go back to the Lord. Truly, you know all these things, but the power to do it, you don't have it. Truly, all these little foxes are inside your Christian life. Please, everybody close your eyes. Truly, you want to come out of witchcraft, but you are a witch. You don't know. But all these things is torturing you. Hey, I know I'm a witch. I want to go to heaven, but how can I confess? The power will come upon you. Wherever you are, you need God in your life. You want to make Jesus to come back into your life. You want Jesus to accompany you in this your heavenly race. Wherever you are, raise up your hands. Please take a bold step coming front. Don't be ashamed. Some of you that will be saying, saying the sinner's prayer, you are standing there and will be repeating it. Why are you not coming? Up? Because you are ashamed. And the Bible says, if you are ashamed of me today, me too, when you die, I will be ashamed of you before my father. So it's better. You come and accept the Lord now. Come and accept the Lord. Have you been doing masturbation? Have you been doing abortion? There is blood stain on your hand. Have you been doing evil? Have you done bad, backbiting somebody? Slander somebody? You have spoiled somebody's name badly? You have unforgiveness? Please come out. Please come out. You are a divorcee and you have gone to remarry. Please come out. Please come out. Please come out. As you are coming, just begin to ask the Lord for mercy. You are putting on all this makeup, jewelry. Women should not wear trousers. You are wearing naked dressing. They are seeing your breasts. 
seeing your back. These are the things men look and they lust after you and commit um, immorality with you. Those dressing are dressing of the allots. Don't dress them. Cover yourself. It's God that gives husband. It's God that gives wife. You don't need to be naked. Begin to come out and say, God, come and cleanse my life. God, and come and cleanse my life. Begin to pray. Ask the Lord for mercy. You don't know when you will die, neither do when Jesus will come. Come. Don't take chances. Don't sit there and handle and harden your heart. Come. Don't be ashamed. Be an evangelist, a pastor, whosoever. This is a new beginning. The Lord will forgive all your sins. That is what he say. If your sin is black like coal, I will make it be white like snow. That is Jesus. He loves you so much. He is ready to forgive you. If you are ready to confess your sin, and there are some sins you need to meet pastor to confess it. You have restitution. You have done bad to people. You need to confess those things to those people. Come for counseling, and they will guide you how to do it so that your life will be peaceful. You have borrowed money. You, you are running. You don't want to pay. Don't run away. Come, they will cancel you and you will make peace with your debtors. Come and show, ask God for mercy. Come and tell the Lord to cleanse your life. In the school, you have done corrupt act there. Come and tell the Lord to show you mercy. You are in a cult in the school. You are joining bad friends. You are doing evil there, drinking alcohol, taking drugs. Come, you have joined kidnappers. You have joined armed robbers, bad boys in the area. You have done bad. Come, the Lord will be ready to forgive you. Come and receive Jesus. Come, you don't believe in Jesus, you are a Muslim, come and receive Jesus. Don't be afraid, he will show you love, he will care for you. Come and let the Lord be your guide. Come and ask Jesus for mercy. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902 three nine four eight or zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three you can also reach us through our email address holiness revival movement at gmail dot com God bless you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe you, Lord, cause you 